What's up guys? Thanks for coming to Gaming Canada with me today. I'm going to show you how to install the homebrew launcher and get Mocha custom firmware on your Wii U as long as it's on firmware 5.5.1. Let's get it started. This is super easy. Okay guys, so we're on the Wii U gamepad. Go ahead and click system settings and this will allow you to check which firmware you're currently on. We're looking to be on 5.5.1. So we'll just call it 551 right now just to not say all the points. And you should see up in the top corner, on pretty much all the pages here, it'll say 5.5.1 or whatever firmware you're on. This is currently the latest one. If this is a little bit of an older video and you're viewing this, go ahead and click the link in the description and it'll tell you which view version is the newest version for the Wii U. And if it's above 5.5.1, then don't update. But currently, if you're not on 5.5.1, Click this little purple icon over here and it'll say update to the latest system version and go ahead and do that and then we're going to head over to the computer and put some files on an SD card. Off the bat you're going to need some sort of SD card. You can use a micro SD with an SD card adapter but a lot of them don't work for some reason with the Wii U so you might have to experiment a little bit. I recommend getting a SanDisk card especially if you want to install games and virtual console games later because for some reason if you have a Kingston SD card they don't seem to work. They always fail around 90% 90 to 98% on the install and it can be really frustrating. I had that problem at first and then I found out they don't really seem to work and SanDisk works a lot better. So I had a SanDisk in my original Wii so I just decided to toss it in here. So I've got the 32 gigabyte. Go down to the description. There's only four things you're going to need to download for this tutorial. The first one is going to be guiformat.exe. Go ahead and format your SD card to FAT32 with 32,000 KB allocation. I'll show you that real quick. All right, make sure your SD card is inserted into the computer. And go ahead and click on the first link in the description, which will be for guiformat.exe. It should auto download when you click it. And there we have it right there. Go ahead and open it. Should see a screen looks like this. Make sure it is your SD card. So you can see I've got my 32 gigabyte SAN disk and we're going to change the allocation unit size to 32,000 and make sure it's not named Wii U. It's got to be named anything but Wii U or the Wii U won't be able to read it. So I'm just going to call it SanDisk. That's simple. And we're going to do a quick format and hit start. Done. Now we go ahead and hit close. On to the next step. So now we're going to click on the Google Drive uh, link and head over to Matt Kimura's Wii U setup files. So this is from his guide. It's just really simple to use, so we're going to use it. It's already all set up, ready to go. Click the download. It should download. There it is. Wii U setup files. Head over to the next link, the GitHub link, and get the RPX and the homebrew launcher channel so we're going to click on homebrew launcher channel and homebrew launcher rpx and we now have both of those all right we're going to go to the last link here which is weubrew.com slash app store slash chan zips wup installer gx2 so it should automatically download and there we go WUP Installer GX2. All right, go ahead and open up your downloads and your SD card. And you can either delete or keep GUI format. I'm just going to delete it for now to get it out of the way. Right click on your Wii U setup files and hopefully you're using 7-zip. Extract to here. This will leave us with a Wii U folder. I want you to drag this into the root of your SD card. We no longer need that, so I'm going to delete Wii U setup files.zip and the folder. Right click on Homebrew Launcher RPX. Extract to here. And you should get another Wii U folder. 
So all you have to do now is drag this Wii U folder into the root of your SD card and it'll merge with the other Wii U folder. If it says replace files in the destination, this is just talking about uh, two icon files, so it doesn't matter, just hit skip these. So there we go. We can delete that from our downloads folder and delete Homebrew Launcher RPX. So now we have Whoop Installer GX2. I want to right click on it. And I'm also going to extract here. And we're going to right click here, go to new folder, and call this install. So we're going to drag whoop installer gx2 into install. And then homebrew launcher channel. I'm going to extract to homebrew launcher channel version 2.1. Now we're extracting it to this because that'll put it in a folder. Currently the contents of this zip are not in a folder. So we want to take this folder we just made, should have a bunch of random apps inside it, dot apps in it, and we're going to pull that into the install. So we can get rid of these other three, and we're left with an install folder. You want to drag this into the root of your SD card so that it's next to Wii U, not inside of it. This should leave us with an SD card that has a Wii U folder and an install folder inside of it. Now we're literally really close to getting custom firmware. We just have to eject this, so go on and right click on it and go to eject. And that should pop it out of the SD card, I mean out of the computer. And now we're going to stick it into the Wii U. If we're down here at the Wii U, go ahead and plug your SD card into the front and turn on your system. You're going to hit system settings. We need to block Nintendo from updating the Wii U. And then we also need to turn off our quick start menu and our auto power off options. So real quick, click on internet, and then connect to the internet, and then connections, click the connection you're using, and then change settings, and then scroll to the right, and then hit DNS, make sure it says do not obtain, and then if you're in Canada or the US, put that as your primary DNS, and that is your secondary and if you're in Europe put that as your sec as your primary and that as your secondary so swap them if you're in Europe and then go ahead hit confirm we can back out of this so under internet here scroll down to the bottom and make sure your automatic software downloads are disabled So that should stop Nintendo from updating our Wii U. Now we're going to click this little power icon with a wrench next to it. And then hit on it, power settings. Auto power down, make sure it's disabled. Turn off standby functions just because. And that should turn off your quick start menu. So go ahead and hit back, and we're done in here. Okay guys, now that we're done messing around in system settings, go ahead and click your internet browser. So right here, we can go ahead, click our little me, change one of our bookmarks, so let's say about internet browser. Let's change the name real quick. So I'm going to name it Homebrew Launcher, and I'm going to type in HTTP loading two eyes dot ovh slash 
five five zero slash capital H B L K and hit OK. Now you should have loading dot OVH slash five five zero slash A B L K. Go ahead hit done. Now hit back. And now when we hit this, our our system is literally a step from being hacked. So it's going to launch a video that crashes, and then that gives us access to our SD card, which is then going to load Homebrew Launcher. And ta-da, you now have Homebrew. So scroll through your items here until you find Mocha Custom Firmware. Go ahead, click on Mocha, and then hit Load. Now this is going to restart the system and inject Mocha into it. And basically, you now have custom firmware. It's that easy. The Wii U can now play backups, virtual console backups, virtual console injects. You can rip save files. You can um, inject save files. You can use cheats and trainers like in Breath of the Wild. Just to show you real quick, this is a virtual console game. And it's loaded right up. Now, if you guys want to learn how to get virtual console games and backups, tune into my next video, and I'm going to show you how to do that. If you want to see how to auto boot the homebrew launcher every time you click that that internet button go ahead and click the link in the description okay guys so the thing about mocha custom firmware is you have to do the browser launch every single time you boot up your Wii U there's another way to do it called hacks chi and essentially it it costs you seven dollars and you have to buy an eShop virtual console game and just for right now mocha is just super easy and I'm just gonna leave it at that so you just launch your browser launch homebrew launcher launch mocha and then you're in mocha and you'll be able to run anything you've installed with whoop installer now I'm gonna show you guys whoop installer because we're gonna install the homebrew launcher channel and a whoop installer channel so I'm gonna click on internet browser and go back you guys will click a bookmark I've got this one auto loaded I remember I said I would leave a link in the description if you want to auto load it like I just did here so we're gonna go over so make sure you're already in Mocha custom firmware we're gonna head over to whoop installer hit load and from the install folder that we put on our SD card we should have the homebrew launcher channel and whoop installer so I'm gonna go ahead and click on both of these and hit install and we're gonna install them to the NAND Hit OK. Go ahead, hit the home button. Hit the home button again. This will take you into Me Maker most times, so go ahead, hit close out of Me Maker. Now, 
we should have a whoop installer channel and a homebrew launcher. So as long as you're in Mocha Custom Firmware, you can use either of these channels to launch either the homebrew launcher or whoop installer. So, like I said, I will show you guys how to use WUP installer on my next video. And hopefully now, you guys have some homebrew. Just one more thing, I'll show you. We'll talk about this on the next episode as well. Maybe the one after that. This is called Lodine GX2. I'm going to be showing you guys how to make these cool backgrounds, how to make this custom little game icon. And Pokemon Soul Silver isn't even a game you're supposed to be able to play, so it's an NDS inject. See, there's also custom cover art. I'm going to show you how to make that as well. Oh, I have to hit A on it. <laughs> I'm tapping on it with the... How cool is that? Well, hope you guys enjoy.